Chris, I really appreciate that powerful talk you just gave. Uh, it's kind of a strange transition. Uh, not only, not only to be talking uh, about uh, you know a natural resource topic, but uh, but uh, also it, I, I'm not going to talk ex exactly about what uh, uh, Senator Stinnett just just said. Uh, so it, I'm going to be talking about fishing. So uh, <laughs> so yeah. Um, and so, so, so anyway, and, and, uh, and I appreciate uh, I pre appreciate Jay sort of setting up the local context here of of, uh, of what's of uh, of the valley. Uh, how many of you are from the Big Wood River Valley? So a few of you. Well, hopefully, what I have to say, is, uh, you know, for the people who live here, I hope you appreciate it. And those of you who are not from here, maybe there's some messages you can you can take home. Uh, as many of you know, over the last couple of years, uh, a group of local partners, including Trout Unlimited, uh, the Sun Valley Institute on Resilience, uh, the Wood River Land Trust, Will Miller, uh, the Nature Conservancy, the Blaine County Recreation District, and other partners have proposed a large scale uh, restoration project that would restore uh, seven reaches of the, the Big Wood River to more naturally functioning condition. And uh, the project has several goals, one of the main ones being to improve uh, the fishing on the Big Wood River. Maybe that will help with reduce some stress for folks. But uh, it also will help reduce flood hazard, uh, reduce sedimentation, and reduce severe bank er erosion. So about uh, three months ago, the uh, partners uh, in the project uh, approached the College of Natural Resources, wanting to know more about what, were, what would be the economic effects of uh, such a restoration project on the valley. And specifically looking at, to try to start a conversation in the valley about, uh, and, and about the effects and uh, also to talk to potential funders about what those effects would be. So they asked us to, uh, to put together uh, some estimates rather quickly without connect, collecting any new primary data, uh, using existing information about the river, the project, the fishery, uh, anglers, and the local economy. So I've put together what I call a rapid assessment uh, to in, sort of to inform the discussion about the, about the project. So the numbers you see today are preliminary, uh, but they're our best estimate given what we know to date and, uh, and for the effects that we've looked at so far. So what are the effects of, of, a, of a restoration project? Uh, uh, we are looking specifically at three different types of effects as we move from a degraded river condition to, to a restored or enhanced river condition. And f first are those near-term impacts to the local economy that result from the expenditures on the construction or re restoration activities themselves. Then there are the longer term impacts uh, that result from the improved conditions in the river that, uh, uh, that for, and we're specifically looking at the increased recreational use of the enhanced fishery. And then there are the economic benefits that result from the restored ecosystem, such as the reduced flood risk, improved water quality, improved fish habitat, and other uh, increased recreational opportunities. And notice that I've used, uh, been very specific in calling one type of, of economic effect an impact and the other a benefit. And this is intentional because in the world of economics, these are two concepts and, and words and I use them, they have different meanings and are measured differently. Uh, I am an academic, so I have to have one economic graph, but I promise this is it. Uh, the, uh, the idea of economic benefit comes out of the world of public sector benefit cost analysis, where we're concerned about efficiency and gains to society from investment of public dollars into public resources. And the Big Wood River is a public resource, and, it, and its fish are too. So benefit, the idea of benefit is really focused on the consumer. What does the angler gain from a better fishery? What do property owners uh, and the public at large gain from less flood risk? What do, does society gain from having better water quality? Uh, so this figure uh, is just an illustration of what happens when we restore a river and improve the quality of the fishery. More of the resource will be demanded, that is more fishing, 
uh, and it creates an increase in benefit to anglers. Economic impact comes out of a whole different part of economics. Impacts are really focused on the producers, uh, the, the folks who supply goods and services in, in an economy. So how does spending by consumers affect uh, the amount of production and the producers in that region? And an economic impact simply measures the net change to an economy that can be attributed to particular activity. So in this case, restoring the river. And impacts are measured by, by something called input-output models that, that quantify interdependencies between various producers and consumers and in a regional economy. Uh, you've probably all heard the term multipliers. Well, the magnitude of impacts are determined by expenditure patterns within the economy, uh, how expenditures circulate through an economy, and then how quickly they leak out of the economy. So sort of at the heart of our, our model for both benefits and uh, impacts depends on how anglers respond to a improve, an improved fishery. Uh, in our model, uh, as a result of restoration, anglers go fishing more. They spend more days out fishing. Uh, so using some local data from the Idaho Department of Fishing Game, we think there are about, people spend about 31,000 days right now fishing on the river. So with an improved fishery, we assume that uh, the, an increase of about one and a half times that over a 15 year time period as the, the, as the uh, fishery recovers, and then it stays there for about, f for at least five years. Uh, so this is a simple response function in the model right now. We know there's annual variation in angler effort based on, on weather conditions, on water, water in the river that year. But we just wanted to show uh, a simple upward tra trajectory. And as we understand more about angler response, we can make adjustments, show variation, and show an in, in potential increase. The other thing that's important from uh, the perspective of economic impact is, uh, is that we, we, we're estimating that about 80% of anglers come from outside Blaine County. Uh, and it's important because non-residents or those uh, represent new money coming into the community and that's what drives the economic impact. Uh, so let's talk about some of those, the, the impact side first, and look at the near-term impact of spending on, on the restoration treatment th themselves. Uh, project partners estimate that the total cost of the project is going to be around 15 million uh, and take several years to complete. So for sim simplicity, we divide it into five years at $3 million each year. Uh, then we broke it down just into four categories or economic sectors because different types of activities have different effects on the economy. Uh, we used a simple four sector model, uh, environmental services, things like the environmental studies that have to go in to determine what treatments are appropriate, uh, engineering services, uh, designing those treatments, the construction, actually moving dirt and rocks and tree roots and, and uh, other things, and then the administration that oversees and monitors the project. So in our model, we were looking just at Blaine County. We used Implan, which is a common Im, uh, impact model used uh, throughout the United States. Uh, so in the model, again, it's just spending that, that will be spent in the county. So of that three million, we've, we just estimated that about 2.3 would be spent annually in Blaine County. So what are those near-term impacts? We, uh, there are, Four common measures that people use to measure impacts. I uh, don't have time to go through all of them, but the one that people are most tip typically most often uh, uh, most interested in is jobs. You know, how, many, how many additional jobs on an annual basis will that uh, out output uh, uh, create? And in this case, we, we're estimating about 24, 24 jobs. Uh, and then, the, the, measure, the measure that's probably most appropriate is what's called value added. That uh, really is the most comprehensive measure of new money that, will be, that comes into the region. Uh, it includes employee salaries and wages and benefits, proprietor income, uh, corporate profit, uh, and, and taxes. So uh, we're estimating about $1.6 million for each of those five years. The important thing to note about these short-term benefits is that they only, they're only here that's, that, that money is only coming in for the, as long as the project is under construction. So let's talk about uh, the long-term impacts from that increased use of the fishery by anglers. Uh, 
The, and, and in this case, we're looking, we're, again, we're only looking at anglers who are not residents of Blaine County because they're the ones bringing new money into the community. Uh, again, how much do they spend? We, we use some data from uh, Idaho Fish and Game, and we estimate currently they're spending about $4.2 million. And over our, the course of the restoration project and, and river recovery, uh, another two million added to that in, each year. So what are the current economic impacts? Uh, in Blaine County, we think there are about 56 jobs supported by fishing on the Big Wood River and bringing in about two and a half million, a billion dollars in value added to the county. Long term, we see that growing to about 26 uh, jobs added in, in, in years further out and, and an additional 1.2 million annually. So to, uh, talk about benefit for a minute. What's the, what's the increase uh, to the benefit to anglers? Uh, to estimate that value, we have to know how many, uh, what, what's the increase in angler days but also know how, uh, how much an angler values a day of fishing. And there aren't any studies in the, the uh, Big Wood River Valley about how much an angler uh, benefits from a day of fishing. So to get that, we use something called benefits transfer methodology, which me basically means we look at uh, values developed at other sites and, uh, and with similar fishery and, and uh, angler characteristics and apply them to our site. And so in our model, we, uh, we chose two values, one high and one low, just uh, to give us a range. $34 a day comes from a, a, st a recent study uh, on trout anglers in streams in central Idaho. And then the $113 comes from uh, a study done on the Henry's Fork of the Snake River. So uh, we could spend a lot of time talking about, you know, the difference between anglers on the Big Wood and uh, anglers other places, but uh, we think it just gives us just approximation. Uh, benefits accrue over time, and because they occur in the future, we, you know, we show them uh, discounted uh, in, in, in net present value. We could, we could spend a lot of time talking about net present value and what's appropriate to use, but uh, again, so, uh, in, the, the bottom line is somewhere between three and $22 million, depending on uh, the higher low estimate and the discount rate used. Well, you know, how do we judge whether the benefits of the restoration project make it a good use of public or private resources? Well, the traditional sort of look of, uh, in public uh, benefit cost analysis suggests that you know, perhaps this project uh, is a good use of resources, uh, at least under the high estimate with a lower discount rate, uh, just the benefit of the improved recreational fishery alone outweighs the cost of restoration. But uh, I would also say that we only projected out 20 years and those benefits are likely to continue beyond that. But I think it's even more important to note that our estimate of benefit looks only at one result of restoration, uh, improved fishing. Uh, people benefit from the river for lots of other reasons. You know, it just the project outcomes are reduced flood risk, improved water quality, and aesthetic impact that uh, affects real estate values. And, and all those things can be, can be measured and weighed against, against project cost. As well as, uh, as we think about value and think about benefits, there are things that we get benefits from, from indirect, from from having options in the future. We get benefit from, from not using things, uh, just simply knowing that, a, that, a, that the Big Wood River exists in a, in, a, in, a, in a good condition. So we've only scratched the surface by, by looking at benefits of recreational fishing. So uh, Zach, who's gonna follow me, is, and is, is really gonna talk about, uh, he comes at it from an investment point of view about, of, of looking at restoration. You know, how do we begin to capture some of those benefits through uh, investment mechanisms? So thank you very much.